Hi, today I want to talk to you about the process of making a photography portfolio to apply to photo school. I like to take you through my own portfolio, how I made it, what decisions went in, into it, what pictures I chose and why, and how I was ultimately able to get accepted to one of the most acclaimed and prestigious photography schools here in Berlin. So let's get into the video. So first, maybe I want to give you a little bit of context about myself. Um, what I do, who am I? Why am I talking to you about portfolios? I'm Katja, I'm a freelance photographer and I'm a copywriter based here in Berlin. And I've been taking photographs with an analog 35 millimeter camera and a point and shoot camera for the past two years. So I started in the beginning of 2019 and I've been ever, ever since I've been making uh, photos, mostly portraits, but also some documentary style work on analog cameras. So about one and a half years into my photography journey, about six months ago, I decided that I wanted to learn more about photography. I wanted to get deeper into the topic. And so I decided to apply to a photography school to do a full-time three-year studies in photography. So this school that I applied to is called the Ostkreuzschule für Fotografie and it's based here in Berlin, um, in the east of Berlin. So to apply to the school, I needed to make a portfolio. So I have my portfolio. I'm going to show you a little glimpse, but I'm also going to show you a little bit of cutaway footage of my portfolio. And I'm going to talk to you about the process of how I began to structure my portfolio, what went into it and all of that good stuff. So first of all, how long did it take me to make this portfolio? Well, I think it took me about a month to one and a half months uh, from starting the process of choosing my portfolio pictures to then ultimately making my um, final, final choices and making the prints for my portfolio. So I started by really going back through the catalog of my work. I went back to the archives and I looked through all of the projects and all of my work that I made throughout the last two years. And I was really looking for the projects that I knew that I really liked, but I also wanted to see what had I made in the last two years and are there some interesting hidden gems that I could pull out and put into my portfolio to make it really stand out. So going through my archives was a really, really fun process for me because I got to look back at my work. Um, I got to reflect what was interesting to me, what had, had I done in the past two years and really like what progress did I make within these last two years of taking a lot of portraits of people doing a lot of test shoots, doing a lot of free projects, but also some paid uh, commissioned work that I did and look really for what have I done and how would somebody else look at it that didn't know me, didn't know my work and what would be the most interesting to them. But besides looking for what could be interesting for other people, I mean, what was really most important to me is to see what work did, did I really love, what catches me, what makes me feel good, what really, what is really the best work that I think that I made. So I, I would say this is a good tip. Um, look really for the, your best work in terms of what do you like best? Because ultimately this is the kind of work you want to be doing is work that you really like, that you identify with and that speaks to you because photography is a really personal matter, it's, it's a really personal art form and really this is the most interesting also to people who look at your photographs is to see what moves you, what interests you, what is your personal perspective and view on the world. So basically I went uh, back through my catalog catalog not only on 
computer, but also through my files. And um, I have scans of all my analog film on my computer. So I went through folder to folder and pulled out all the photographs, all the potential photographs that I thought could go into my portfolio. And really I made copies of these files and I put them all into one fo big folder on my desktop. And I did this process throughout maybe a couple of days, maybe up to a week. I was looking through my work, going through it systematically, pulling all the photos that I liked into this folder and collecting everything in one place. So after I had collected everything in one place, I started looking for building a narrative. So basically for a bit of context, um, the photo school that I applied to, we were asked to submit 20 pictures. 20 images tops, you could submit less, but 20 images was the maximum of images that you could submit. And you could submit it either digitally, which is what I did, or you could submit it uh, as prints. So what I did was to look for narratives in my work and see how can I present it in the best way. And one of the things that I was really looking for was, I mean, what is my strong suit? And for me personally, my strong suit is portrait photography. So I knew from the beginning when building my portfolio that this would be a major focus of my whole portfolio is to present all my best portraiture work. What I, what I did then um, was also I called up some people, I called up some friends of mine and some people that I knew who had studied at the school that I was trying to apply to. So I really wanted to get their perspective of the studies at the school, how did they like it and what did they think was important to put in your portfolio? Because they knew the people there, they knew how the teachers approach portfolios, how they approach images, what they look for in somebody's work. So I talked to them and Basically, I asked them, what do you think, what could be a strong portfolio to build? And um, what they told me is really to focus on my strength, to show a variety of work, but also, and this was like one of the most important tips for me and what really helped me out when building this portfolio, it was to look for series of images um, as opposed to only presenting single images. So this is really interesting in photography and especially if you do kind of journalism type shoots, documentary type shoots, is that people want to see a story in your images. And as soon as you have more than one image, if you have two images, it creates a story because there is a relationship between these two images and they, they, they take take your mind through this, this story, through this narrative. So what I ultimately decided to do, yes, I wanted to show all my strongest, all my strongest portraiture work, but I really went into my work and thought about, okay, did I shoot a series, a little body of work, nothing that, you know, was years and years of work because I didn't have that. I was only doing photography for two years. So I didn't have any big project, any long-term projects, but I went into my work and I looked for a single series that I was happy with that could stand out and that would show all my strengths in photography. When I was looking for the series, I remembered I shot a series, a document, documentary series at the beginning of this year when I went to Cuba. So I was staying in Havana and I was there for four weeks and I was mostly in central Havana walking around the neighborhood and taking black and white pictures of street, street scenes, basically kind of street photography, but I was also approaching people and asking them to take their portrait. So basically I ended up with this series of street photography, documentary type work and 
and really nice portraits of people. And this whole series was in black and white and um, it was spread out through two rows of films. So I had about 70 images or so that turned out well and that I could then look into and see how can I choose some, some, a great series for my portfolio. When I found the series, I decided, right, this is gonna be one part of my portfolio. So I decided to split my portfolio into two parts. The first part being this Cuban series of street work and street photography and street portraits of people in all black and white. And the second part, I decided to go through my work and pull out the 10 best portraits that I had made. So for the second part of my portfolio, I decided to not stick with black and white images, although I do love black and white images. And this is one of my favorite type of photography is to shoot black and white film. But I decided um, I also want to show my color work because I do love color as well and I have some really strong images that are in color and I decided to mix up that second part of my portfolio and show my strongest colorful portraits and my strongest black and white portraits that were solely portrait work and not documentary work. So this was the second part of my portfolio where I chose the 10 best images um, from all the work that I had reviewed and then I also put them together in a kind of narrative and it doesn't matter what you do but you as the photographer as the one presenting your work you decide how people read your work and I say read because this is important they read your work they read your work as a story so they're going from picture to picture and it's telling them a story and whether this is a story based on like okay how am I seeing the world or if it's a story of going from color to black and white going from really close-up detail shots to really far away whole body shots that doesn't matter but it's still like a flow of a story in your work and I this is a big part of what I was trying to do is arranging my work to create like this even flow. A really important part of creating this, this kind of flow for me was to switch from only working on my computer and arranging the pictures in PowerPoint because this is what I use. I don't have any fancy like Adobe suit thing so far. so. I was just using the programs that I have on my computer to create my portfolio. So I used PowerPoint in Drive and I put all the images in there and I was arranging, going back and forth between arranging them in a story, right? So at some point it was really important for me to switch from this digital way of working to a more analog way of working. So what I decided to do, and I'm going to show you in a minute, is to print out my work. And what was really important with this step as well is not to do any kind of fancy prints that I'm going to waste my money on and that I'm going to really feel precious about. And I avoided doing this. So what I decided to do is go to a copy shop and print all the images that were kind of in my final cut down to I think I had about 35 to 40 images. I went to the copy shop and I made some cheap normal paper printouts. Let me show you. So really just cheap cheap paper printouts of my images and what this was for what this helped me to do is really arrange the images put them on the floor put them on a wall put them on a desk and move them around move your pictures around physically and see how they flow what works together what colors work together which images follow on from one another and so on really 
like getting in there, putting your hands into your work and getting a little bit physical with your work and creating that connection. And this is really, this is a really fun process. First of all, it's really fun to do this and to see your work printed out, even if it's just cheap paper prints, to see it, to feel it and to move it around and kind of work with it for a little while. I didn't do this only on one day. I kind of did this for a couple of weeks, maybe one and a half or two weeks. I was playing around with these printouts. And really I say playing around because I put these printouts in a little in a little file like this and I put them in my backpack and I was carrying them around everywhere, really. For two weeks I was carrying them around and whenever I was meeting friends and talking to friends that I thought they're artistic, they have a good eye, I would just pull out these prints and ask them, can I ask you for your opinion? I'm not sure, I'm choosing my portfolio. Um, maybe you would have a look and tell me what pictures you like. I was just kind of observing them, how they were observing my work. So I, I was kind of reading their reaction and seeing, okay, what pictures do they really like? What pictures stand out to them? Are some like really ignored really fast and they don't care them, put them to the side. And this was really cool to me. I, I also got to talk to them a little bit about my work and tell them about how I created it and what each image meant for me and all of that good stuff. So this was a really, really cool part. Then I had created this portfolio and I sent it off with the rest of my application. I sent it to the school and um, it took, a, it took a couple of weeks and I got a call back. So they sent me an email saying, um, you have been accepted to the next round and you have to come in for an interview in two weeks and present your printed portfolio. So now it was the most fun and final step and really rewarding step to a photographer to make a proper printed portfolio. So. I decided um, on the format that I wanted it in and here this is the format that I went with. So this, these are 15 by 20 prints and I decided to get a wide frame. You can see it here a little bit. Then I had, I have this box and I had this idea of putting my whole portfolio in a box like this. Easy, simple black cardboard box. Um, and I thought this was a very cheap, but beautiful and easy minimalist way to present your portfolio. I put all the images in the same format and I send them off to a trusted printer. And they are a great fine art printer, and but they also do some inkjet type prints um, that are good quality, kind of cheap. I think they cost about two euros per print. So I didn't have to spend that much on my portfolio. And really I talked to them, to the printer, and they said like, there's no point in making like high quality, crazy, fine art prints at this stage because you're applying to do a photography degree, you're a student, an applicant, and really they don't expect you to do any crazy fine art prints. This is not what it's for. Um, they want to see basic printouts of your work so they can move them around, look at them, talk to you about them. So I decided to do these inkjet prints and really they turned out great. I was super happy with the quality. I was super happy with the color, especially the color photographs, they really kind of popped. Yeah, so this is a photo with the light leak, as you can see. I was really happy with these. The final step, I took my box of prints, I took my portfolio box, on the day of the interview, I took it with me, I brought it with me, and I um, had to take up my work, present my work, and I was asked some questions about it, I answered some questions, and had a really nice chat with the professor, 
um, at the photo school and yeah, a day later they notified me that my portfolio and they, they liked my portfolio and that I was accepted to the Ostkreuzschule für Fotografie in Berlin and I was super happy. I'm still really happy and I'm about to begin my studies in uh, three, three months from now and I hope to create more videos like this for you. Uh, so if you like this portfolio video, uh, please subscribe to this new channel and uh, follow my photography journey, follow how I study photography. I will take you along hopefully on all the interesting parts of my, my studies at photo school, of the projects that I'm making, um, the art that I'm making, my gear, uh, what I like in photography, my favorite photographers and all of this good stuff. So if you want to see more videos like this, please like the video and subscribe to my new channel. I'm happy that you're here and yeah, let's, uh, let's do this together, I guess.